Hey folks, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, I surely appreciate you stopping in. If you're a repeat, uh, welcome back. Guys, I build these videos uh, for like-minded folks just like you and I to help us get to the finish line uh, more or quicker but more proficiently, right? Like I always say. What we're going to talk about, guys, is one of the, the reason that I feel that most shop plots fail. So let's just start here. The number one reason that I feel that a shop plot fails is it doesn't stay a shop plot. So it's very easy to take a shop plot and make it a food plot. How do you do that is you, is you put the wrong food in it and you put the wrong deer next to it, right? Uh, and on top of that, you overpressure it. So uh, as I always say, guys, is there has to be a difference in your shop plot program versus your food plot program. Now, you might be fertilizing it the same way. You might be, you know, uh, putting the same lime on it, right? But you're treating it different because it's a different entity. It's a different piece of the puzzle, very important piece of the puzzle. Uh, but some properties have them, some properties do not. So let's talk about this. So that's the first step, right? That's the reason they fail. I feel the second thing is here that we're going to talk about today guys is how do we what do we do to treat them different and why 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 do we treat them different right so the number one thing to to kind of you know break apart there or to learn from that is this you can make a food plot or a shop plot a food plot by bringing dough bedding to it if you bring dough bedding to it within that first hundred yard rim you set your buck cruising past that location um, because of the does you bring that bedding too close to a shot plot, you cannot get away from it. Like I said, you might just as well at that point be sitting on top of your food plot, your main food plot, because you can't get away from it. And if you can't get away from, away from it and you pressure it, they're probably going to use your food plot and your shot plot, right? But they're going to use it at dark. It does no good. The shot plot itself, guys, has so much power that you really, really want to treat it uh, kindly, right? So... Always remember, don't bring your dough bedding creation to it. Make sure your dough bedding areas stay on your food plots or, or next to your food plots, not on your shop plots. So the question I get is this. Uh, if I if the, you know, the determination of shop plots are two different ways I look at those, right? One being connected to the, the food plot. So I get the question, well, how in the world do you want us to keep the doughs away from it if it's actually connected to your food plot? So what you do, guys, is your shop plot is screened in, right? You'd like to screen those in. If you just are lucky and there's uh, it's a very dense around it, right? And it's just a little... Uh, you know stopping point before they go out into the sh out into your main food plot Then maybe you don't have to use screening, but you you know, hopefully Whether you put it there or it's there make sure it's tucked in and it's very secure So what you do guys is you do not put the dough bedding or enhance any of the dough bedding past that Starting point of your screen. So I'm gonna uh, kind of turn you around here and I'm gonna explain this one a little bit better now keep in mind this is early spring here and our, our uh, screening is not done because I haven't had the opportunity uh, because of some logging that was done and I knew we were going to be driving in and out of these shop plots. I didn't go the extra mile last year and make these shop plots. So now that everything is done, they're going to be made. Uh, so let me turn you around here, guys, and show you um, kind of the piece of the puzzle. We are on the top plot here and this plot is kind of shaped like a dog bone and the reason for that is it's actually... Uh, it is actually has two shot plots on each end of the food plot. This is one of them guys, but stand right there Secure access into it was an old pond right there. I pulled the levee on that pond. That's drained now We're putting the emphasis on the water hole here, right? Uh, so this is the one end of it. This spot here is a belled out food plot, right? There's a belled out shot plot. I'm sorry. So this is gonna be the shot plot We got an old walnut there that I left for a camera water hole that faces north uh, access and behind this whole thing right here guys you can see i've got the clover coming and we're building this uh better and better it's actually seeded now we get this rain coming this week this thing is going to blow up but this is one this is the long food plot right here so the food plot and i because of the ridge country right my roads on the top and then the food plot is actually separated by the road 
So there's actually two pieces of it. That's one portion of the food plot. This is another. And this year, this will be all screened off, kind of on a triangular shape, if you will, a diagonal right to here. This is all going to be John Comp's HD screening all the way through. So that keeps the food plot secure. And right here, I've got these uh, some cedars and some brush. Uh, fell a couple of the old red bud and and a couple of the old uh, locusts that were right there. Fell them into this to kind of make a pinch here, if you will. And this whole section right here behind, guys, about 12 to 15 feet, 20 feet wide, right here is all going to be HD screening as well. So you can see that this is now uh, kind of boxed in, right, like we talked. Down at the other end of it, you can see the box blind down there. We call that size blind. My boy's blind. There's another shot plot right here on the end of it. That's the ag. The wind blows right out into the out into the, the access point, and the ag starts right up here on the hill behind it goes in. So we got a nice uh, gap there for the wind arson to go into. And that one's got a shot plot bailed out right here on the end of it. So right here, guys, is what, I, like I was telling you, this is all going to be John Comp's HD screening. You know, we're going to get that stuff up 10, 12, 14 foot tall all the way across here. Just, you know, poke a hole here in the center. Very secluded. And I've uh, got switch planted all the way around it. Uh, long term, this is going to be kind of a, a really, really neat piece of the puzzle here. Why I touched on that is this. Keeping the dough bedding separate from that so i'm going to get down here and you're going to look over my shoulder this is that wall that we just spoke of right right here behind us this is going to be that 20 foot wall of uh of the screening john comp screening right blocking this in right here is where the dough bedding actually starts right behind over the hill so it starts here and it goes the whole face of the dough bedding just inside of the about 20 feet is part of the transition that slides by here and if the reason for that is is so when we're hunting in that stand or we're hunting in this stand the wind is our in our favor he's actually able to slot behind this um or in front of this dough bedding all the way down through here and he doesn't have to expose himself out into the food plot so uh thinking ahead right thinking that um we have to we have to be able to slide him past these areas so he doesn't get uh you know so he doesn't it hasn't exposed out in the food plot this one here guys is just a huge piece of the puzzle this actually falls off just a little bit and when paul uh, we get paul coming to do some more mulching this is my uh right on the face of that is going to be the mulch trail just inside of that and all my dough bedding is behind it so the reason i touch on that is this this is where it starts and goes that way and it's ended on that shot plot before it hits the blind down there and the shot plot down there. The dough bedding is in the center on that slope right here. And we are not getting busted getting out of that stand. When we get in here, the doughs aren't laying right here on the back side of the shot plot, which is right here. They're not, they're not bedded right here. We're not worried about them being right there. I, I didn't enhance any of the dough bedding in here. It actually starts uh, you know, right on the corner of this the switch down. So one of the biggest reasons that they fail is because we don't keep them separate, as we talked about in the last video, we don't keep them separate with what we're plant we're planting in them. So the only that so the difference is first of all, right, we plant uh, like John Comp's uh, Northwood Whitetails there, we plant his clover chicory in here or a clover in rye, uh, but we don't Put brassicas the reason that we're not putting brassicas in here is because of that fact if we plant planted brassicas in there it's now not a shot plot it's now part of your food plot and you have stagnant deer on this when you're hunting that stand and you cannot get away from it you can't get in and out of it because it's got so much bulk of food here that they're here they don't they know they they check up here they're here too long and that's not what you want that takes the whole theory away from a shot plot you want this to be a one bite one stop shop right and then go off into the food plot pass the screening out into the food plot i can see that feeder from both ends of this uh i can't shoot it with a bow but i can see that so i know that they're stationary in the center of that food plot uh you know 125 yards 150 yards from each one of these uh stands or blinds and i can get out of the back door and be gone and and uh, last year uh, as an example this was before this shot plot 
I was actually sitting right here on the end of it just catching this movement in because the shot the food plot didn't start until right here and uh, with no screening on it and I the first time I sat here to hunt Atlas he actually came out on the other end and up into the field and I watched him for um, about uh, let's see probably about 45 minutes he was out before dark right and he was there when I left I got down out of this stand on the other end of this field I uh, got down and left he was still there at dark I slipped out the back door when I got back to the uh, the uh, camp I got back to the house my uh, cell cams showed that he was still there you know when I got that batch at night he never left so I did not blow him out of there that's without screening so now with the screening it's going to be even even better right so the ending part of this is what do we put on them to make them even more attractive to make them more of a one-stop shop right so that's where this comes in guys I'm for and show you the licking branch and in the uh, good old Kentucky ground it wouldn't it be great to to be able to put a hole there and bury this cedar in uh, but we you know unless you had a carbide tooth on a uh, <laughs> post hole ticker uh, welcome to the welcome to living on a rock right so a uh, couple posts and how I do this guys just to kind of show you is I put that down I ratchet it on the bottom and then I, I use this this T post here on kind of an angle right and I always leave the lower limbs and what that does is if you were to just run this ratchet around this licking branch or this post let's say right that we're putting a licking branch off from it, it just spins so I put that one on an angle and I tie it on the bottoms and I tie it on the tops and now this thing in the wind it doesn't rotate on you at all and it just stays there then um, that's what I was actually doing today is they look great when you can leave the top of them now if you were in a, a spot you may be in the Midwest or wherever you're turning in tuning into this from is you put that in the ground then you can leave that big beautiful top and boy it looks way more natural but if you can't and it creates a wind drag I always lop the top of them out because what happens is is it it creates a wind drag and then your post I'd have to have another post which I'm probably going to put another one on there just to be safe anyway but uh, it just folds them over so the wind gets a hold of them they become a huge wind drag so with that being said licking branch though back to the back to the uh, point here right the licking branch um looks like somebody urinated in it this morning when they got out here and released some coffee don't know who did that but uh but anyway the licking branch is there making this shot plot even more attractive making that the one-stop shop because the hole is going to be right behind it going out into the food plot right um so licking branch and the final piece of the puzzle is throwing water uh, right here the water hole into it now you can see guys is what i've done this year so last year this wasn't here right what i've done guys is that right there you can see that pond uh was water and the first year i was here that thing had no deer tracks around it hardly at all there's great vegetation around it i wasn't worried about the cw or the uh, uh the uh, ehd uh you know what if factor and so anyway i was blowing my window over the top of it and no deer it worked great now last year it was as dry as it was there was deer all over that thing and the water went down enough that i had that little rim on there kind of spooked me with the hole maybe if ehd ever hits we definitely don't want to do that so pulled the plug now uh, there's no need for him to be back there I'm blowing the scent right back to where i walked here there's no food all the other food plots are on the other side of that ridge way down didn't get in and out of there uh undetected on a pm sip and everything is uh, actually I can hunt it pre-rut um, kind of an all-day set if I needed to um, once this is all screened in but the water hole now is here 300 gallon instead of just 100 normal 150 gallon that we use uh, because it's out here in the wide open and what happens is is if you don't if you don't put a large volume here with these guys is what you'll find what happens is is uh, the evaporation because you're right out here right out in the big sun right and uh up, this is the highest and driest spot on the whole farm and it will evaporate like crazy so put 150 gallons in here you're going to be out here uh filling it more so last year was perfect example 62 days of a drought here in central kentucky i had to fill my tanks three times twice i could have filled them the third time and uh i've got tanks in the uh, state of michigan and all over the country right uh my my farms and my clients farms that i've never filled from the first time I filled them so or refilled them so last year was just one of those tricks so always remember that guys what I would do in these situations is 
especially because it's a field to go stronger, go with your 300 gallon tanks here instead of your uh, 150s, and then you don't have to be in here filling as much. So in a perfect world, we wouldn't be have our road right through our shop plot, but because it's ridge country and, and you know, you got to stay on top for your roads and that's how we service my food plots, mine has to come through uh, here. So maybe over time, uh, the compaction off the road, we can work on that. But both sides of it, I've got plenty in here to be able to use. I've got this whole piece of on this side of it uh, and I've got that whole big bottom piece there uh, right below the stand. That's all this encompasses all the shop plot. And uh, yeah, so that is the food there, the uh, shop plot situation, right? In a nutshell, and why we do and why we don't on some things. Remember, guys, the biggest piece of the puzzle on the shop plot that I can pretty much probably teach you is keep it a shop plot, don't make it a food plot. Uh, by like we touched on, don't bring your doughs to it, don't bring your um, you know, your heavy food to it, and you'll have a shop plot now. One last thing we're going to touch on guys is this uh, and i'll show you some videos here i don't have one of these on the farm but i have them on multiple um client far farms properties across the country and boy i'm telling you uh, a couple of them that jump out in western kentucky if you're watching this the clients will know who you are uh, that are very very strong pieces of the puzzle um but what we what i'm referring to is my bullpens now these bullpens are shot plots but they're buck kind of focused towards bucks right they're internal to wood lots uh, there's no doe bedding around them and we're bringing does or bucks I'm sorry to those areas before they go out on the playing field right so the reason I call them a bullpen is this is in the morning when those bucks come back in to that area they are pretty much dragging because they've been out running all night and they are very slow they grab a you know a drink of water use the licking branch maybe take a bite and they go back to bed when they in the evening because there's a multitude of trails from buck bedding coming into one location that's where it got this name the bullpen if you're a baseball fan at all what that was guys is i named it that years ago so what you'll see is after they are called out let's say right or that they are brought uh in the evening they are wanted you know wanting to get back out on the field what like i said where the name came from is they are rested and they come out of there and when they get to that shot plot they take a bite their ears are up and they take a drink and as funny as it is 95 percent of the time they actually trot away from that uh, area be, uh, of that shot plot that bullpen and they hit the transition and they're like running back out onto the playing field right so that is where the whole bullpen thing that i came up with years ago uh that's where that stemmed from uh, lesson on this one guys is this Pre pretty simple uh lesson but it's something that's often not um you know kind of uh honored let's say right is planning your shot plots into something that is not different than your or planning it the same way or it's something that's not different than your normal f plot they become a part of the food plot at that point and then you are euchred you're stuck on them uh at night you can't get into them in the morning because there's deer there. Uh, you can't get away from them at night uh, because the deer are there. There is no way to keep them unpressured. So the value of them goes kaput, right? So keep that in uh, mind, guys. Strong, strong piece of the puzzle. Uh, there are some tips on why a shot plot and a bullpen work and why they do not. Thanks, guys.